Good morning to you, Sir John. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. I'd um, love to get your thoughts, actually, just before we talk about other issues we've invited you on, about Suella Braverman um, and the views on multiculturalism, views on uh, uh, legal, illegal migration asylum, because... Um, there's no doubt at all that the, the Tories view that, you know, stopping the boats and dealing with these issues is a big issue. But we know that voters are still concerned about legal, you know, visa-led migration as well, which is at a record rates. Sure. Um, one of the things that's ha not happened in the wake of Brexit is a reduction in immigration, not least because when we decided to introduce the same rules for both EU uh, and non-EU migrants, we liberalised the view, the uh, rules for non-EU migrants. It's now easier for non-EU migrants to come to the UK than it was before Brexit. And that, together with um, what's happened in Ukraine, what's been happening in Hong Kong, and the fact that the United Kingdom has, still has a very tight labour market, has helped to ensure that uh, legal immigration, indeed, on the most recently published figures, is now at a record high. Uh, meanwhile, yes, it is indeed proving difficult to stop the boats. But I think conservative politicians are making a bit of a mistake if they think that they can recover their party's position significantly by focusing on immigration um, and without ha actually dealing with the two issues that clearly are related to how people are likely to vote in the next election, one of which is the state of the economy and the other is, a, is the NHS. Yeah. So, for example, if we take the issue of Ill illegal immigration, yes, there are lots of people who voted Conservative in 2019 who think that illegal immigration has gone up. Of course, there's been a lot of publicity about it. But those, 20, those people who voted Conservative in 2019 who think that illegal immigration has gone up are basically no more or no less likely to have defected from the Conservatives uh, since 2019 than those who don't think that illegal oh, immigration That's interesting. Gone up. In so it, way, may, it may not be quite the, the, the vote winner on mass that they, they need. Um, well, it's not the cause of the Conservatives' difficulties. No. Therefore, it's probably not going to be yeah. the route back. On, on its own, that's a signal of difference and divide, but it's not something on its own because today you say cost of living, people people have got a poorer standard of living. Um, it's simple as that. Uh, and they can't get health treatment. There's not at all. Well, look, health treatment certainly was an issue at Lib Dem conference yesterday. Ed Davey, the Lib Dem leader, um, one of his key pledges was a uh, two month cancer treatment guarantee. I think it says quite a lot about how frankly broken our country is the offering to let people have cancer treatment within two months is like a oh how exciting a while i mean this should be a i mean that should be the latest you should get cancer treatment in a civilized rich country but no one really cares what the lib dems are going to be offering on any policy because they're not going to be with all due respect to liberal democrats and ed davy they're not going to be the next government what they care about is whether or not the lib dems will prop up uh, either labor or the or the tories um, in the event of a hung parliament and we've had quite a lot of different statements there but how does what the Lib Dems and Ed Davies say about that how does that affect their chances because if they say we would prop up a Labour government but not a Tory government as basically what's been said this week does that affect their chances of getting the same number of votes? Well, the honest truth is they've been saying for quite a while now that they're not willing to help prop up a, a Conservative government. Um, uh, they think that in doing that, it will help them to win over Conservative voters. And basically, the, the Liberal Democrats are betting the farm on the Conservative Party continuing to be as unpopular by this time next year uh, as they are at present, uh, i.e. deeply unpopular. And that as a result, there are plenty of people who voted Conservative in 2019 who will be looking for an opposition party to vote for to express their discontent and that in the relatively small number of constituencies where the Liberal Democrats start off in a good second place, they will choose the Liberal Democrats uh, rather than Labour with which to express their views. So it's all essentially funded, founded on the Conservatives' difficulties and the NHS, as we were saying earlier, is undoubtedly one of those difficulties. British Social Attitudes has shown that uh, a dissatisfaction with the health service is now at a record level since uh, the survey started measuring it way back in 1983. And so that's, that's essentially the bet they're making. So we know they're not going to be willing to support the Conservatives also, frankly, because although they don't want to talk about it, the Liberal Democrats disagree fundamentally with the Conservatives on Brexit. Um,